Um, uh, David Shearer. Um, I'd like to take, take a brief call on this as well. I mean, I, I, I thank uh, Tim McIndoe for he's not here at the moment um, for his for his uh, explanation on to how how the the name of the park actually became uh, Piranha Park. I was I was sitting here talking to uh, to Nanaya Mahuta and asked her is did this name come from a Maori um, background. Uh, and, and she said, no, there is no such word as, as piranha. And we, 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 we believed and thought, well, perhaps it was the George Parr who, uh, as we know, vested this, this land in the... Well, I, maybe it was Darian Fenton who thought of it first. I wasn't, unfortunately... Uh, I, 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 and I'd like to give her credit for coming up with that without ag- having read the uh, submission, which uh, to, to McIndoe uh, confirmed to us confirmed to us before. It does actually raise the, an interesting issue, though, how um, Sir George Parr and the word Arno, which refers to the bridge, actually gets, comes together and gets joined together. Um, and I, I, I still, uh, well, I, I accept his version of events uh, in, t- in terms of the explanation of how Piranha Park got its name. I, um, and Tim, Tim McIndoe might be able to uh, enlighten us a little in terms of how, in fact, Pa and Anna came together as a Piranha Park and how people got to know it as Piranha Park there in the, in the, in the, heart, of, in the heart of Hamilton. That's a, 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 it's a, it's a... It's a very touching explanation. Thank you very much, Mr McIndoe. <laughs> I, I mean, because I... I, I, I I'm pleased. I, I'm pleased. I, I, I'm pleased. I asked. Um, I wanted. I wanted to. <laughs> I, wa- I wanted to also um, touch on the point that uh, Sue Maroney raised, which is about about the 2010 issue. And we, I, I think we, we could we could all we could all benefit from the from the from the wisdom of of, uh, of, of officials, etc., on how 2010 comes into the into the equation when we're actually hearing this in 2011. And as Chris Vakenvall said to us before. If, if this doesn't proceed uh, as quickly as it should through this course of this year, we could actually be in, into 2012. And in, under a new government, we could actually be putting this through, but providing the same support, um, because we're supplying that, su- that support today to this particular bill under a Labour-led government rather than a, 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 a national-led led government. The third point I want to touch on, and, and, and it was brought up by my colleague, uh, Phil Twyford was, was just in the word vesting. Um, there is an enormous amount of nervousness around the country at the moment about land and assets being sold off. And uh, I think that the people of Hamilton also uh, would, are worried about it. I don't think they are any exception. When the opinion polls say between 65 and 70 per cent of New Zealanders <clears throat> are are opposed to the selling off of, of our state assets, then I would imagine that the, the, same, the same thing applies to land inside of Hamilton. This is a piece of land that is obviously well used. It's, uh, it's wanted to be protected by the Hamilton City Council. Uh, it's been brought forward to this House by, by David Bennett, and I congratulate him for doing that on behalf of the, the uh, Hamilton City Council. Um, it will hopefully ensure that this piece of land in the heart of, uh, of, of, uh, of Hamilton that is being used for, as we heard, Kohanga Rayo, for, for, uh, for various early childhood centres, for a number of, of different uses, is preserved uh, now and, and into the future. Uh, this is an enormously important uh, um, asset to the, to the people of Hamilton. Um, and I think the people of Hamilton need to be absolutely and utterly assured and that that is the intention of this House in the word vesting to ensure that that stays with the people uh, in, in, in Hamilton uh, for, so they can have the use of it uh, both now and, and long into the future. Uh, it is, as I say, a, a, an asset that needs to, it needs to be protected. And I can understand... Uh, why they would like, they, they want to make sure that this piece of legislation goes through to guarantee that that land stays um, in trust for them and for their children and their grandchildren because at the moment there is an enormous amount of nervousness around the country about selling off of assets and of potentially of land 
uh, that people have already felt that they have paid for. They have paid for this as well as the. Thank you. Mr. Chair. 